I guess LA is very diverse to begin with. It was never really a thing present in people's minds, of course, until, you know, race became so prevalent in society. Do you think it was because of politics? Everyone knows when it happened. So whatever it is just started to, something I think about the combination of Obama sometimes playing into the racial stuff a lot. I think social media kind of in some ways amplifies. A bunch of social factors, I guess, came together that first of all, polarized our politics, and then secondly, um, created the woke progressive parade right. that we talk about today. All right, guys, got Vince Dow here today, fellow Asian. I know. Let's go. Real. What, Although I, I don't are? have, I don't know what height jeans you have, but I, <laughs> not I, the I Asian don't have, jeans. not the Asian ones. I don't nah, know. I'm half white. You got, okay. Yeah. Well, I, I'm part white too, but what I, are I, you? I didn't get, I'm Italian. So okay. I guess I, I got two short jeans. You Damn. Know, like the short Italian. <laughs> short Asian. I've never met an Italian Asian. That's a rare mix. Yeah, it is a rare mix. That's it's super a cool. Long story that goes back to a. Uh, the Vietnam War and a lot, lot, wow. of, lot of, lot of stuff. That's lot awesome, stuff man. Yeah. So I'm right. Irish. Mm -hmm. So we're close. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Ireland's we're both in Europe. The Asian power. Asian <laughs> baby. <laughs> what? Which side did you lean more towards growing up? Um, you know, I would say like in the beginning it was more the Asian side, but I, I don't know. I, I never really live life like thinking about my race, if mm. I was to be totally honest. I grew up in Southern California and up until about 2015, 2016, I don't know, we were still sort of living in that old school liberalism where race like genuinely didn't matter or at least people acted like it didn't yeah. matter. Um, so I, I never really, I, for most of my life, honestly, it was like, yeah, I guess I'm Asian, I guess I'm white, but I'm wow. more American. That's you know? totally different than yeah. how I grew up. I, I was, really? uh, people were racist to me growing up. Really? Where'd you grow yeah. up? New Jersey. New Jersey? Yeah. Okay. yeah. I thought uh, most Asians got bullied growing up, but that's interesting that you didn't. Well, there was, I remember in kindergarten, um, <laughs> it was because I, I brought chopsticks to school oh to that's that's with. badass in kindergarten yeah that's cool but and and it's funny because my mom specifically told me like do not do that <laughs> like i i like you're, you people are like other kids are gonna be like um but i was like i did it anyway and then like i think one kid said something to me and i just was like okay i guess i'll just eat with a fork from now on it's wow cool. But that was about it, in honestly, my whole Damn. life. Um, and, and I don't even think for him it was a race thing, if I'm going to be honest. It was just like, that's strange, yeah. right? So like, um, but yeah, I mean, I guess LA is very diverse to begin with. Mm -hmm. So it was never really a thing present in people's minds, of course, until, you know, race became so prevalent in society again, I guess. But Yeah, when did yeah. it become like that? Do you think it was because of politics? Yeah, I mean, uh, a lot of people have their theories on what exactly happened, but everyone knows when it happened, right? It's like the last few years of the Obama years is when we call it the woke. Back then, we called it SJWs. Whatever it is just started to uh, come out of the woodworks. I mean, I'd argue like far left radicals always existed mm -hmm. in society, but um, something I think about the combination of Obama sometimes playing into the racial stuff a lot. Social media, I think social media kind of in some ways amplifies the most insane views because For they sure. get the most engagement and probably a little bit of a skew in the college campuses specifically. Um, just kind of a bunch of social factors, I guess, came together that first of all, polarized our politics. And then secondly, um, created the woke progressive parade right. that we talk about today. Yeah. I never realized how liberal colleges were until uh, Charlie Kirk. Yeah. I mean, I really had no idea because I went to Rutgers mm -hmm. and looking back on it now, it was very liberal. Yeah. To be honest. Really? Did you have that experience too when you went to college? Uh, well, I'm actually just finishing up college right now. Okay. But um, I mean, I go to the University of Florida, so. Not really. I, <laughs> not really. I mean, I'm in the business school and to me, it is actually very rare to run into a liberal. But all my friends who are in humanities and political science, it's funny, we have like this different view of what the school is. Because they'll say, this school is so freaking liberal. <laughs> um, you know, they're surrounded. And then in my classes, literally, like, it's rare to find someone where you immediately can identify that they're a liberal. Most people are just non-political. Most people are conservative, you know? Yeah. Um, well, you don't see many liberals goes. in entrepreneurship other than Mark Cuban. Yeah, and even him, <laughs> even him, you know, something is off about that whole relationship. <laughs> like, I don't know if they have something on him or he like has a certain favoritism, like he's trying to get something out of the Democrat Party or whatever it yeah. is. But 
I don't know. Something about that whole relationship is very insincere to me. There's a bias there because yeah. he was defending Kamala on Fox News last night saying she did a great job. Yeah. But I watched it and I, I would say I'm pretty objective. Like, mm-hmm. even though I obviously lean to the, towards the right, I thought she did terrible. Yeah. Like, I thought, it, I thought it was obvious. And, and even the fact that, like, her team was trying to end the interview early. I mean, yeah. that's the greatest indication that, that you can possibly get right. out there. Um, yeah, if it was going well, why would you end it early? Yeah, but, Mar- I mean, Mark Cuban has basically just became a campaign surrogate for Kamala. And it's, it's just very strange. Because on one hand, she's this progressive populist who's going to go after the billionaires. And then that was, like, one month of her candidacy. And then the next month, uh, she's actually the capitalist who's going to be good for business. And Mark Cuban's out there. It's it's very incoherent. Yeah. It makes little sense. But Now, growing up in, in Cali, though, were you pretty liberal at first? Um, I... When I first, I, like, I've been involved in politics since I was very young. Mm-hmm. Like in seventh grade, I was Damn. interested in, because that was like 2015, 2016. Yeah. So when I first started out, um, I actually was a Bernie Sanders supporter. Okay. So, but I was always, I, I would like kind of akin myself to Tulsi Gabbard. Yeah. Like I was always sort of an anti-establishment, also anti-woke, like kind of like pro-working class leftist, I guess, because- um, I remember back then, you know, Bernie Sanders on the social issues was not nearly as woke or as progressive as he is now. Um, but specifically that summer, I, you know, I was very, I don't know, for some reason I, I liked anonymous. I liked WikiLeaks. <laughs> like I was just very anti-establishment. Yeah. I guess it was like my edgy, like, I think a lot of people go years, through that phase, right? right? So when Hillary got the nomination, I was like full blown, uh, be anon, I guess we'll say. Like, I believed, like, the election was stolen from Bernie, <laughs> you know, and um, I, I was sort of, like, neutral in the 2016 election, but I was kind of rooting for Trump to win because yeah. I would not support Hillary. So I was one of, I guess you could say, those Democrats or leftists that didn't get behind Hillary in 16. And then um, when I got a little older, got into high school and stuff, I kind of just became more conservative yeah. over time. Yeah, I feel like the access to information got easier as we got older. Right Now we could actually look at the real data. Or before, they did a great job at hiding it through traditional media. Right. Like, it was really hard to find the truth 10, 15 years ago. Yeah, yeah. And, and I don't know. I think I always had an inclination that the current system was broken. And I think in 2016, especially, Bernie Sanders was sort of the left-wing version of Trump. Now, I kind of felt like he, I guess, sold out to the party. And that's kind of the moment where he lost me originally was, you know, after all the things that Bernie supporters believed about Hillary and how she was a total pawn of the establishment and she was going to bring us into World War III. I remember when he got on that uh, nomination stage at at the DNC and didn't try to challenge or contest the convention. For me, I was like... I felt very betrayed by that, you know, because I was like, oh, this guy isn't really the crazy anti-establishment warrior that we thought he was. And I guess over time, yeah, I became disaffected with the left as a whole. Wow. Yeah, I wonder what happened with him because I remember that 16 campaign. It was everywhere. Yeah. And uh, he just folded as soon as Hillary got involved, right? Yeah. I I mean, because he's always been, I guess, a bit of a pushover, you know? Same thing happened in 2020 with, with Joe Biden. And I remember... One of the criticisms of him even used to be that he was so soft in debating, you know, because he's a very talented speaker and all, but like he would not really go on hardcore attacks against uh, his opponents. And it's like when you're running against two of the biggest establishment politicians of all time, Hillary and uh, Joe Biden, you know, you saw, uh, you know, for Donald Trump how effective it was to go after Hillary, to go yep. after Jeb, you know, and, and Bernie, I think one of the big downfalls of his career and why he never got a nomination is because he really refused to do that, you know, so. Absolutely. Are you feeling good about this upcoming election? I am. I mean, always nervous until the end, yeah. you know, um, in 2022, I was pretty confident Same. and then that you saw it happen. So we should definitely shouldn't get complacent, but um, the early voting numbers, are looking very good for us in terms of the trends, like which counties have higher turnout, lower turnout. That's in our favor. Uh, The polls, shouldn't trust them as a whole, but the fact that the momentum is with Trump in the final weeks of the election, I think, um, you know, is a very good sign. And clearly the Kamala campaign is in a bit of a panic as it is because they are sudden. She never did interviews before. All of a sudden, they're trying to send her to do every interview (laughs) as you can, you know, totally changing up the strategy. That to me suggests that they know they must see internal polls and probably the public ones too that show okay they're in pretty big trouble 100 yeah. percent. like why would she go on fox news that's like a really right. risky move right and like, they, they wouldn't be taking these risks if they didn't believe there was necessary right. it's actually i think on their part a calculated risk because they know 
if we keep doing nothing, then we're going to lose. So we got to try. It's like throwing the Hail Mary. It's yeah. a low percentage play, but maybe something will happen. You know? Yeah, I think that strategy didn't work because Trump was going on so many shows that they were like, we right. got... We know about Trump. What about Kamala? Like, let's see right. her on shows. So right. that kind of forced her to get on. Some. And it was just one of the big criticisms of her. You know, it's like she doesn't put herself yeah. out there. And I think for a long time, honestly, Kamala has run a fundamentally arrogant campaign when you really look at it. I don't need to do interviews. Why They're not necessary. I have the Democrat machine yeah. on my side. No policies. Even their convention was like, first of all, they did it in Chicago, which I understand it's in the Midwest. But still, usually you do a convention in a swing state. Yeah. They didn't think they needed to, right? Um, the Palestine protesters, they think they're a non-factor. They didn't really even appeal to the independents, I thought, that well at their convention. Mm. So I think now suddenly they're realizing all of that, now that the honeymoon phase and that surge is over, all of their arrogance is catching up to them. And um, now they're in a panic mode. Yeah, what I'm excited. Yeah. I mean, I'm worried about integrity still. For sure. Because For sure. last election, obviously, a lot came out after. And they don't really seem to be talking about how they're going to stop it at all. So that doesn't make me comfortable. <laughs> too big to rig. Yeah. yeah that, that's, that's, so that's hopefully things are good, though. I'm in a swing state this year, and I think we'll go right. But we'll see. I'm mm -hmm. in Nevada. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, it's looking, looking good right to, now. To Poly market's looking there. good. Call yeah. she 60% right now. Yeah. So we'll see what happens. I think especially what your governor did in 2020 really destroyed uh the credibility of the democrat machine the reed machine it's called right yeah state, and there sure. was a guy i don't know yeah. if you saw this he went on patrick bet david's show with one of the machines and he mm -hmm. rigged it right he changed the wow. vote on, on a podcast wow. he showed how wow. easy it was to hack into it unbelievable i mean it's that easy if a random hacker can do it you, you don't think the government can do that no absolutely absolutely <laughs> like yeah. it's so easy if you could tell trump one thing what would you tell him or tell ask him one thing okay. tell him or ask him Either one, whatever's compelling you. Hmm. Two weeks until the election. That, that, that's a... Uh, We're going to send this to him. I'm compiling everyone's answers. Okay, then I would say, you know, this is more to your team as well, but, you know, chase every vote. Like, don't leave anything for granted on the table. There's, frankly, millions of people in this country, believe it or not, who are still low propensity voters. And maybe they live in a small town in Wisconsin or something. And they're not registered to vote or they are registered to vote, but, you know, maybe they're not going to do it, whatever. Um, make sure you're sending people to these areas to, like, you know, give them a helping hand. Like, not obviously not do anything illegal, yeah, yeah. but like, hey, are you registered to vote? Are you going to vote? Blah, blah, blah. Because I think all the little things that Kamala largely ignores, by the way, uh, are going to make the difference. So chase every vote for sure. Absolutely. Thanks for coming on, Vince. That was fun. Appreciate it. Yep. Appreciate it. Boom.